Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at five top beginner plants. They are listed in no particular order. It's just a random list of my top five plants that I would recommend to any beginner. If you do have your top five, you can let me know below what you would recommend. So let's get straight into this video. Number one, we have Aglionemas. Aglionemas, they are also known as Chinese evergreens. They are easy growers. They are great for beginners. They are great for anyone who doesn't want something that is high maintenance because they are low maintenance plants. They come in a variety of colors from our traditional greens and silver to our now variegated types that consist of pinks, that consist of reds and golds. And they do really well indoors if you want to carry this plant indoors or you can leave it outdoors. But bear in mind if they are outdoors try not to have them in sunny areas or too bright of an area because the leaves can get scorched so these plants for me they receive low to medium light daily so again if you do have these plants outdoors ensure that it's it's in a partially shaded area it doesn't receive the harsh sunlight of the day and it should be fine now these plants again you can water them maybe once for the week or twice for the week Number two, we have the snake plants. Snake plants, or you might know it as Sansevieria, the names of these plants would have been recently changed to Dracaena. So if you do see the name Dracaena next to the snake plant, it's not that it's another plant. These plants have actually been renamed. Now, if you don't have a snake plant by now, you're going to want to get one eventually. You're going to want to have it indoors. You're going to want to have one outdoors because they just do well in all areas. They do well outdoors in the, in the bright light and they do well indoors where there's low light. So they are wonderful for beginners because they don't require a lot of water they don't require a lot of maintenance and they don't require you to monitor it on a regular basis they could handle some tough love these plants they could do without the regular watering they could do without fertilizing on a regular basis and they will still look really good and they would really thrive now these plants they tolerate bright light and low light like i mentioned earlier they actually grow faster in brighter lighting conditions and there are a lot of different varieties i only have a few maybe like three or four and hopefully as time passes i'll get some more so if you are considering a plant i'd definitely say a snake plant dracaenas sansevieria is one of is a plant that you should definitely consider third plant that i consider a beginner plant is called the philodendrons now there are two varieties or two different groups that you can choose from where philodendrons are concerned we have the vining types and then we have the non-vining types now that one is easier than the other to care for at least from my perspective i don't find so but you do find that one grows faster than the other so you'd find that the vining types grow a bit faster than the non-vining types and these plants for me they are placed in bright indirect light and i fertilize them monthly and they are watered uh maybe like once for the week if so much now my big uh philodendrons the ones that are placed in bigger pots i mother nature waters those plants for me i hardly even water these plants and they do just fine Number four, we have ZZ plant. Now, ZZ plant is also known as Zamiococcus zamofolia. I think I got the name right. Zamiococcus zamofolia, short for ZZ plant. This plant I would have gotten in a trade from a lovely lady. I would have recently potted it, and it is known. It was known for being in offices and workspaces, and then we found that a lot of different plant lovers started to bring these plants into their homes and i read of recently learned that this plant is actually native to mozambique so zz it requires low to medium bright light little watering this is one of the plants that can do without a lot of watering it if you look at it it looks as if it's fake as if it's the leaves are plastic but it just has this really nice shine to it and it as if it just you know takes care of itself it is a plant that is resistant to many different diseases so it's something that you wouldn't have to worry about if you do get a plant last but not least lovely number five we have the diphenbachia these plants are also known as the dumpkins uh, they do well indoors and they do well outdoors not really pet friendly because if it is they 
Diaphragmbachia are ingested, they can they can um, cause some numbness. So I would recommend to keep these plants if you do have pets and you're a beginner. Uh, I would say to keep these plants away from your pets. But the these plants they have beautiful foliage and they come in a wide variety, different varieties as well. They are actually related to the Aglionemas, the first plants that we would have spoken about earlier. They come from the Araceae family. And this explains why I would have been confused when I started my journey because I thought that the Aglionemas would die from Bacchias and vice versa until I started to learn a bit more. I recognized that they are actually different. So these five plants, Diaphrambachia, CZ, Philodendrons, snake plants, Aglionemas are my top five plants that I would recommend to anyone who wants to start off their journey. It's simple, it's easy, and then you can add to your collection as you continue to grow and grow and grow with your plants. So definitely don't be discouraged if you have had one of these plants and they died. Don't be discouraged. <laughs> I would have killed a couple of plants myself. It's all a learning experience for us. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully I'll see you soon with another video.